If you're an emo, you're emotional, but you've adopted it as a way of life and for some, death. The danger of it all for parents highlighted by two teenage girls carrying out a death pact in Victoria. Chris Simmon now on what parents need to know and respond to when emos are involved. We miss you and uh, yeah, we want to hear from you. The calls, please. When 16-year-olds Jodie Gator and Stephanie Gestia left their homes just over a week ago, their parents could not have imagined it would be for the last time. My daughter said she was indicated that she was going out to um, go shopping with a friend of hers, which is um, Stephanie. The tragic discovery yesterday of the girls' bodies in bushland east of Melbourne followed an apparent double suicide. And while the circumstances leading up to their deaths remain a mystery, an accusatory eye has been cast over their subculture. The girls were known as emos. This is a movement which does talk a lot about I guess self self doubt and I guess issues about being in pain, being un not understanding the way the world is, and so self hurt and self mutilation is part of the, I guess that understanding that this is going to maybe lead to at the extreme level to suicide. Short for emotional, the term emo was first used to describe a genre of rock music. Later, it became a slang term applying to a fashion style consisting of tight black jeans, black t-shirts, jet black hair and eyeliner. But recently, emos have gained a more sinister reputation, with depression, self-mutilation and suicide, all associated with the group. They're not extroverts, they're more introverted type people, but certainly I think that there's a, a certain amount of pain that they do feel, and sometimes that does manifest, not always, but sometimes with uh, cutting themselves, burning themselves, a bit of sort of self-pain infliction is, is sort of what often happens with these people, that, you know, that this is the way that they somehow cope with it all. John Schwartz is a pop culture expert from Melbourne Swinburne University. And while he says teenage emos are often struggling to deal with the pressures of growing up, blaming the subculture for the deaths of Jodie and Stephanie is going too far. I think that you can't actually put any particular blame on a movement, on a particular kind of musical style or even fashion statement. These musical styles and fashion statements have been going on literally for decades. It's like he deliberately goes out of his way to shock me. He cuts himself up, he cuts his mates up. 16-year-old Rodney Banfield is one of a growing number of teenage emos and his mother Jo doesn't know where to turn. I just wait for the phone call every day. <laughs> either he's dead or he's done something to someone. Things have got so out of hand in their household, Joe was forced to slap a restraining order on her son after he threatened her with a knife. She blames his behavioural problems on the emo way of life. It seems to me that the emo culture is about blackness and gloom and doom. Psychologist Evelyn Field is so concerned about the rise of the emo subculture, she urges parents to seek professional help if their child succumbs to it. It's really about life is not worth living. Evelyn says it's particularly important parents keep a close eye on their teenagers' internet use. And considering we found websites which have been established to teach teens how to become emos, and the fact Jodie Gator left what could have been a clue to her suicide on her MySpace page, it's sound advice, but not her only. Parents need to look at how their children are presenting. Are they happy or sour, depressed? They need to look at the clothes they're wearing. They need to look at who they associate with. Are uh, they associating with kids who are enjoying life and doing the nice things that young people do? Or are they associating with young people who say life is bad and I can't handle it? Chris Simmons reporting.